It's amazing what looking into the past can teach us about the present and even the future. Once again, today we are looking into Harmsworth Natural History to look more into the world of pelicans, to see what scientists used to think about these unusual birds. We're gonna meet a few different species, as well as look at their adaptation of the rather impressive beak. So join the safari and let's look into this incredible book yet again. So let's take a look at the American Great White Pelican and see what used to be thought of this bird. Pelicans are all very similar in general appearance and habits, although the American White Pelican differs from the rest in being an expert diver. Pelicans commonly occur in enormous flocks in the neighborhood of swamps, estuaries, and rivers. Their food is mainly fish, of which they consume immense quantities, but crayfish have been taken from the stomach of the American species. And what do they say about the European pelican? Let's find out. The typical European pelican attains a length of about five feet and inhabits the more southern parts of Europe and northern Africa. The females attend to the feeding of the young, which is affected by the old birds pressing their beaks against their breast and raising the lid-like upper half of the former when the young birds thrust their heads into the pouch and help themselves to the fish. Now let's look in to if these things still hold true today. The American white pelican has quite the range, from Manitoba, Canada, west to California, and even down into parts of Mexico. They live on inland shallow freshwater lakes, wet prairies, and marshes in the summer. And then when it comes a bit chilly, they migrate to coastal lagoons in the winter. Turns out that Harmsworth didn't quite hit the mark. For the American white pelican does not dive for their food. Instead, it scoops up fish and water in its pouch. It will tilt their head back to drain out the water and then swallow the fish. The only time the American white pelican carries food in its pouch is when it's taking food to its chick. Out of the eight species of pelican found throughout the world, only two dive bomb for their prey, one of which is the Peruvian pelican and the other, the brown pelican. Even when flying 60 feet above the ocean surface, the brown pelican can spot a fish swimming, and then they'll dive to catch it. Now it's time to look into the adaptations of pelicans and see what makes them just so cool. While pelicans have a lot of incredible adaptations, the one that stands out and puffs out the most is the gular pouch. The first thing that comes to mind is how it acts like an airbag when the two species of pelican that dive, the brown pelican and the Peruvian pelican, dive bomb for their fishy food. For as soon as they hit the water, the bird's jaws are thrown open under the water and their forward momentum is then slowed. Depending on the species, the extendable sack of skin that's at the base of their throat can hold more than their belly can. Typically, it holds up to about three gallons of water. But just because it can hold up to three gallons of water doesn't mean they do. In fact, it's just a way to capture their food. They'll be swimming along and then use their beak to scoop up water with hopefully a fish inside and then tilt their head back to drain out the water so then they can just swallow the fish. But that's not the only thing that's cool about their gular pouch. The lower jaw bones of pelicans are capable of bowing outwards, which enable them to use their sacks as fishing nets. So we saw two of the eight species of pelican dive bomb, but what about the rest? How do they hunt for food? Well, they actually form hunting parties occasionally that gather in a U shape and then they'll beat their wings on the water to get the fish into a tight cluster 
or even drive them into the shallows and go for it just like this. A recent study that was published in 2020 found that the brown pelican has quite the stretchy gular pouch. Well, we can see that they need to since they use it to catch their fish. But this project looks specifically at the numeric values. They found that this bird has triple the value of stretchiness, for lack of a better word, in the longitudinal direction. This is way higher than most conventional skin. However, the study did find that the age of the bird was found to affect the response of the pouch significantly. Well, thanks for joining me as we looked into the amazing book that is Harmsworth Natural History, which was written back in 1910. If you missed my previous videos looking at macaws and hornbills, check them out in the description below. With that in mind, if you learned something new today, why not give this video a thumbs up? And I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.